that we don't deal with that. Amen? So that's really quick. I could have spent a week on that. But that's number one essential, I believe, for healing is that you've got to believe it's God's will to heal you and you cannot waver on that. But let me say that there's a lot of people who believe that God wants them well and yet they're still sick. I bet you there's a lot of people right here and a lot of people watching online that you are struggling with manifesting a healing and you can't understand it because you believe God wants you well. So here's some other things. I believe that that is a first step. I believe it's absolutely a foundation and it's essential, but that is not all that there is to healing. And again, I can't show you in Scripture that this is an inspired list. These are just things as I've dealt with things over the years that I've learned. And one of the next things that I consider to be a basic or very essential to receiving healing by your faith is to recognize God has already done His part. It says in 1 Peter 2, 24, By His stripes you were healed. Jesus isn't healing people today. And I know some of you may be shocked saying, What are you saying? Jesus has already done it. 2,000 years ago, it says, By His stripes we were healed. His stripes were taken during that time of crucifixion. It was in Herod's judgment hall, and that was 2,000 years ago. Jesus isn't taking stripes on his body tonight. Jesus isn't healing people tonight. He healed you 2,000 years ago. His part is already done, and he is now seated at the Father's right hand. He is not uh, bearing your sins and sicknesses and suffering for you. It's already been done. The curse of sin has been broken. Jesus has paid for every person's sickness. Man, I wish I had time to go over to Isaiah chapter 52 and 53 and show you that he was marred so much that he didn't even look human. His visage, his face was worse than any human face has ever been. It wasn't the Romans beating that did that. He took your sickness, your sin, your disease into his body. Every pain that you've ever had, Jesus experienced that on the cross. And not just yours, but the entire human race. All of the sickness and disease, all of the swollen heads, all of the deformities, elephantitis, these boils, anything that the human race has ever suffered came into Jesus' body. And all of the sickness of the human race came into him. And that's why Isaiah chapter 52 verse 13 says he didn't even look human. He's already borne your sickness. If Jesus bore it, there's no reason for you and me to bear it. Jesus suffered these things. And it is, His part is done. One of the greatest revelations that God ever gave me is in a series that I called, You've Already Got It. That you're already blessed. He's already done everything. And some of you are thinking, well, but it's not true for me because you're only looking in the physical realm. You're looking on the outward man. You're looking at what the doctor says. You're going by what you feel in your body. But in the spirit realm, if you've been born again, you have the same spirit on the inside of you that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. And it's not a tiny bit of that spirit. It's not like you've got it in mustard seed form and now you've got to grow and mature your spiritual man. That's not true. Your spirit man is perfect. It was born again, perfect and complete and completely mature. Your spirit isn't growing. You aren't getting the word into your spirit. Your spirit's perfect. It's your brain that's the problem. We are trying to renew our minds so that we can understand and draw out what's in our spirit. But you have the fullness of God on the inside of you. You've got the same power, Ephesians chapter 1, verses 18 and 19. You have the same power on the inside of you that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. It's not out there. See, if you understood this, this would get rid of so much religious junk about how we got to bind the demonic powers and create a hole in the heaven so that our prayers can get up to God. Man, I'm not going to stay on this because I got other things I want to say. But that's just dumb, dumb. That's dumb to the second power, dumb, dumb. Somebody said, well, Daniel, in the book of Daniel, the demonic powers blocked his prayer. That was an Old Testament man. 
it also says in the Old Testament, in Isaiah chapter 64, I believe it's verse 6, rend the heavens and come down. I've heard people pray that my whole life. Oh God, send revival. Rend the heavens and come down. Just send your healing. Put forth your healing hand and touch this person. He already did it. He rent the heavens and came down through Jesus. He suffered for everybody's sins and sickness and disease. And Jesus is now seated at the Father's right hand. You don't need to get your prayers up past the demons and through some hole in the clouds up to God. God lives here on the inside of you. That's the reason you bow your head when you pray so you can look at God. You say, Father, this whole thing is, is a misunderstanding of what Jesus has done or in ignorance. I'm telling you, Jesus has already done his part. If you're begging God to heal you, you're wasting your time. God's already healed you. It's not up to God to heal you. Amen. Somebody, well, where does that leave me? Because if he's already done it, I'm sick. Again, you're only looking on the outside, on the inside. You have the same power that raised Christ from the dead. And it's not based on your holiness, on your goodness, whether you fasted and prayed and done all of the right things. It's already on the inside of you. The only thing you got to do to release it is renew this mind. And when you start seeing who you are and what you have in Christ and your authority, well then this power that's on the inside starts flowing through you and manifesting itself on the outside. But the first step is to understand what you've already got. I think that this morning they quoted that verse out of Philemon chapter 1 verse 6 where he said, I pray that the communication of your faith would become effectual, that means it would begin to work, by the acknowledging of every good thing which is in you in Christ Jesus. It didn't say your faith begins effectual, becomes effectual by begging God for more. Oh God, give me more faith. Oh God, send revival. Oh God, touch me. Oh God, give me a double portion. See, that's the way the body of Christ has been operating. But instead, it becomes effectual by acknowledging. You can't acknowledge something that doesn't already exist. By acknowledging the good things that are already in you in Christ Jesus. And our ignorance of who we are and what we have in Christ is one of the biggest blockages to us receiving healing from God because we approach God as a beggar. Oh God, I am nothing. I have nothing. I can do nothing. But I know that you can do anything. You'll die praying a prayer like that. That's wrong. You know, if I was God, which certainly I am not, but if I was God, I think I'd look at Jesus and say, didn't you tell them that they have the same power that raised you from the dead? Didn't you tell them the works that I did you can do also? Didn't you tell them that? I mean, if God could be confused, he'd be confused with the way that people approach him. I have people come to me by the thousands and they, they love to make their situation this huge, impossible situation and solicit pity. I'm nothing. I can do nothing. The doctor says, I'm going to die. Would you please pray for me? If I was God, I'd just drop kick you off into space. God has done everything for you. God's part's done. Jesus said it's finished. You're already healed. Healing is yours. You don't have to ask for healing. You don't have to beg for it. You don't have to live and do certain things to get healed. Healing is the children's bread is what Jesus said. It belongs to you. It's already accomplished. If you're sick, it's with your unbelief that is what's causing the problem. God's already done his part. And once you know that, that's not all that there is to healing. But I tell you what, that is huge. That's huge. If you know that you have the healing power of God in here somewhere, you won't get discouraged. You won't quit. You'll just stick with it. If you have to, you'll push your Bible around for eight hours with your nose saying, I know it's here somewhere. And you'll stick with it until you eventually get it. An old blind squirrel will get a nut every once in a while if he doesn't quit. If you just were absolutely convinced, Father, I believe I'm healed. I believe that by your stripes I was healed. I'm not going to be healed. I was healed. If you believe that, 
you would eventually stumble on the healing. It would just happen nearly accidentally. Man, this is huge. Again, I could teach on... Matter of fact, I do have a teaching on this for about eight hours, amen. But anyway, that was number two. And let me just say this one last thing. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. Grace is what God does. And grace is independent of you. It's not based on your performance. Matter of fact, all of the grace of God was manifested in Jesus. It says the law came by Moses... But grace and truth came by Jesus Christ in John chapter 1. And so all of God's grace was poured out through Jesus, and that was 2,000 years ago. Jesus hadn't died since then. So all of the grace of God towards you was manifested 2,000 years ago before you and I lived, before we had a problem, before we had a need. So God, by grace, healed us 2,000 years ago before you ever got sick how could you possibly believe that this is tied to your goodness, to your holiness, to your performance? It was done. Well, somebody says, well, if it's done, well, then how come it's not done? How come I still have this pain? How come the doctors are still saying this? Because grace is God's part, faith is our part. And here is a huge misconception. And I've got an entire series on this, living in the balance of grace and faith. And... Most people believe faith is something you do to make God move. That's wrong. Faith only appropriates what God has already provided by grace. If God hasn't already provided it, then you can't make Him do it. If you understood this simple principle, and I hope somebody expounds on this this week, but if you understand this principle... Well, then it takes all of the struggle out of it because it's already done. The only struggle that you've got is to renew your mind and start trusting, resting in what Jesus did instead of swallowing the lie that I've got to be holy enough, I've got to do something to earn this, to make God move, and on and on. Man, there's just so many things I could say about this, but this is just major. You've got to believe that God's already done His part. It's through. It's finished. And that is huge. When I began to understand this, it's like I went to a whole new level in seeing healing in myself and in other people. This will make a huge, huge difference in your life. Number three here, if you're keeping track, is that you are the ones that now have authority over sickness and disease. I've got a teaching that goes along with this entitled, The Authority of the Believer what you never learned in church. And really, most of the problems that people come to me with could be solved if they just knew their authority. But they, are, they believe that God can heal. They may even believe it's His will to heal. But they are just waiting. They ask and then they wait as if it's up to God whether you get healed. It's not up to God whether you get healed. I got, I got uh, Daniel and Tracy down here saying amen. The rest of you are looking shocked. <laughs> but look in, look in uh, Matthew chapter 10. Let me just read these verses to you. I've been quoting a lot of verses because I can cover more ground that way. But you need to go study these out and get to where they're in your heart. But in Matthew chapter 10 verse 1. And when he had called unto him his twelve disciples, he gave them power against unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. He gave them, his disciples, and we are now the them. We are now the ones who have this power. It did not end with the first century apostles. You know, a real powerful passage of scripture on that is, is Acts chapter 3 where Peter and John were going into the temple and they healed the man who was lame at the gate of the temple and he went walking and leaping and praising God and, uh, and the people looked on them and he says, why are you looking on us as though we by our own power our holiness had made this man to walk? But be it no made known unto you by, that by the name of Jesus through faith in his name 
the faith which is by him hath given him this perfect soundness which you see in here today. He said that it was the name of Jesus and faith in the name of Jesus that produced this miracle of a man who had never walked. He was 38 years old. You find that in the next chapter of chapter 4. And 38 years, he had never walked. That means that there was no muscles there. This was more than just a healing. This was a miracle. He was instantly given muscles and coordination. He had never learned to walk. And yet he went walking and leaping and praising God. And he said it was the name of Jesus through faith in his name. We still have the name of Jesus because you can't be saved by any other name. And it's faith. By grace are you saved through faith. So we've still got the name of Jesus and faith in his name. And that means that therefore any type of miracle like this can happen. It did not pass away with the apostles. God gave us this authority in Matthew chapter 8. He continues here and he tells his disciples... In verse 7, Matthew chapter 8, excuse me, Matthew chapter 10, verse 7. And as ye go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I could spend a long time on this, but this phrase, at hand, simply means that it's not off in the future, it's now. The kingdom of heaven is here. Healing is here. Yes. And again, this, this lack of understanding is reflected in so many things that we say in the body of Christ. Like there is coming a great move of God. God is going to do this. God is going to move. There is coming a day. Nearly every prophecy you will hear about the power of God is off in the future. The body of Christ is headed towards a victory in their mind. But the truth is we are coming from a victory. It was accomplished 2,000 years ago. His part is done. And... He says, go preach and say the kingdom of heaven is here. It's now. You don't have to wait. You don't have to go somewhere else. It's here now. <laughs> Praise God. And in verse 8, he said, this is a command. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received. Freely give. You've already got it. God's already done it. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 3, you're already blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. You have the same power living on the inside of you that raised Jesus Christ from the dead. It's not out there. It's not a prize to be earned. It is already in you. If you are born again, you have the same power in you that raised Christ from the dead. And if somebody says, I don't think I do, well then you aren't born again. Because Romans chapter 8 verse 9 says, If any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. If you don't have the Spirit of Christ on the inside of you, then you aren't truly born again. If you do have the Spirit of Christ, then you have the power, the one who was raised from the dead, and the power that raised him from the dead. You've already got it. And this authority has been given unto you. Now you have to use it. Going back to Acts chapter 3, where this man was healed at the gate of the temple, it, uh, it says that Peter and John looked on him and said, Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have give I unto thee in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise and walk. And they didn't even pray a prayer. They reached down and grabbed him by the hand and immediately his feet and ankle bones received strength and he went walking and leaping and praising God. They never prayed for the man. They never asked God to heal. They didn't say, oh God, we are nothing. We can do nothing. We have nothing. But we know you can do all things. That's the way religion prays. And you know what? That's a chicken way of praying. Because God, it's not up to me. I have nothing. I, I, it's all you. Oh Lord, would you stretch forth your hand? And if they get healed, you say, oh well, praise God. And if they die and don't get healed, well, must not have been God's will. God works in mysterious ways. But when you sit here and start saying, I'm supposed to go heal the sick. I'm supposed to cleanse the leper. God gave me power over all the power of the enemy, over all sickness and over all disease. And in the name of Jesus, I take authority and command. You know what? That's risky praying. Carly and Daniel were talking about that this morning, about the fear of what happens if... You know, I pray and nothing happens. I guarantee you, you're going to have to deal with this if you quit begging God and saying, God, if it's your will, heal. And you start saying, no, it is your will. You've already done it. You gave this power to me. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And you reach down and just grab him by the hand and jerk him up. 
You know, I took this passage of scripture when we were in Seagoville, Texas, and there was a man that brought his son to me, and his son uh, didn't have any vocal cords. He was born without vocal cords. And he wanted me to pray for him. Anyway, it's a long story. But I, I never did pray for this guy. I just said, in the name of Jesus, I command vocal cords to come into you. And I commanded him to start talking. And he opened up his mouth and nothing had come out. And I said, are you born again? He shook his head, yes. And I said, are you baptized in the Holy Spirit? He shook his head, no. And I said, well, man, that would help. I said, you need the power of God on the inside of you. So I prayed for him and prayed that he would receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And I said, now start speaking in tongues. And he just started speaking in tongues. He was like 40 years old and had never spoken before. First words he ever spoke were tongues. <laughs> Amen. Wasn't that neat? And after it was over, I thought, I never did pray for this guy. And then I thought, well, it worked, so I guess it, it was all right. You know what? We have authority. Mark chapter 11, verse 23. Jesus had spoken to the fig tree, and he commanded no man to ever eat of that fig tree again. And the next day, 24 hours later, this is a good illustration for healing, that he spoke, and nothing looked like it had changed immediately. But the next day, 24 hours later, the fig tree was dead and it says it was dried up from the roots. That means that the moment Jesus spoke, it was dead. But it just took 24 hours for the death that was under the ground in the roots to manifest in the physical realm. The moment you speak, if you believe, it's done. You're healed. But it may take a period of time for that healing to manifest, for your body to recover and stuff like that. So anyway, that's a, another teaching, but that's a great truth. And he spoke to the fig tree, and when his disciples the next day saw this fig tree dried up from the roots, they were shocked. And they said, Master, the fig tree that you cursed is withered away. And he said, Have faith in God. And I don't believe it was like, Have faith in God. It was like, Have faith in God. Like, what's wrong with you guys? You've seen me raise the dead, you've seen me do all of these things, and you're still shocked that I can talk to a tree and kill it with my words. And then he's told them in, in Mark chapter 11, verse 23, that verse that Kenneth Hagin wrote. Amen. <laughs> Kenneth preached on this so much that people thought he wrote it. But it was just a supernatural revelation that changed his life. And it says, For verily I say unto you, Whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he saith. There's a lot in that verse. But let me just point out, he said, Whosoever will say to this mountain, not say to God about this mountain, now see, most people don't meditate on the word and get this revelation, but this is tremendous revelation. For you to not go to God and say, Oh God, I've got this mountain, I've got this problem. Would you please take it away? God, would you please remove this? See, that's the way that the body of Christ prays. He didn't say to talk to God about your problem. He said, talk to your problem about God. Tell your problem to be cast into the sea. Implied in that, if you think this through, means that you understand God has done His part and He gave that power and authority to you and you are taking your authority and speaking directly to the problem instead of asking God to deal with it. God is the one who has already done everything. Now it's up to you whether Satan flees from you. You have to resist the devil. James chapter 4 verse 7, and he will flee from you. You have to fight sickness and disease. You have to talk to it. This has been a real breakthrough in my life. When I started saying, pain in the name of Jesus, leave, it works. You know, a classic example, I know many of you have heard me give this, but it's still good. It's awesome. Anyway, I, uh, people were watching the healing journey of uh, Nikki Oshinsky, the very first person we ever put on one of our healing journeys. And she was in constant pain for four or five years. Was The doctor said he never expected to see her. And anyway, she got healed. 
the people saw that testimony and asked uh, if I would pray for this woman and I said sure and they said well she's already on her way she'll be here in five minutes I prayed for this woman this woman had all kinds of wrong thinking she thought God gave her that sickness God was getting glorified and so I taught her some of the things that I taught you tonight that no God didn't give her this sickness that is God's will for her to be well and I countered all of her doctrine and after about 20 minutes of stuff she says all right I'm ready to believe so I prayed for her. I rebuked pain spoke to the pain and commanded pain to leave her body she had had pain for seven years the doctor said on a scale of one to ten her pain was a constant eleven and she had magnets taped to her body and then magnets sewn into a blanket that she wrapped herself in and somehow this magnetic field lessened the pain and she had survived two years after the doctor said she'd be dead but she was just in terrible shape. I prayed with her, commanded the pain to leave, and she took this blanket off, stood up, moved around. She says, I don't have any pain. First time in seven years that she had been pain free. But then she says, I have this burning or this stinging right here in my waist in the back. What's, what's the deal with that? And I said, you didn't tell me you had stinging. You told me you had pain. I didn't talk to stinging. So I said, watch this. And I spoke to stinging and commanded stinging to be gone. And it was gone. Amen. And then I took Mark chapter 11, verse 23, and taught her these things. Man, I'm talking as fast as I can talk. <laughs> I hadn't got time to... Let me just say this. Healing, faith, is voice activated. God created the heavens and the earth by words. Your body... Every virus, every bacteria, trees, respond to words. Jesus spoke to the fig tree and cursed it and it died. Words are the parent creative force of all living matter. Words will affect your body, will affect sickness, disease. It affects the devil. You overcame the devil by the blood of the Lamb and the word of your testimony. Uh, Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21 death and life are in the power of the tongue and they that love it shall eat the fruit thereof words are powerful words are how you release your faith God said let there be light and there was light words are how you release your faith so we I spoke to that woman's body and pain to the stinging in the left I taught her these things and as she was getting ready to leave, it was like 45 minutes after she first came in, probably 20 minutes after she was healed, and I'd given her some instruction. She was getting ready to leave. She put her hand on the doorknob, and she just froze, and she turned around and looked at me, and she says, the stinging is back. And I said, well, I've been teaching you what to do. So I said, I want you to pray. I'll let you lead the prayer, and I'll agree with you. So I just joined hands with this woman, and she started praying. And you got to remember that 45 minutes before, she was a Presbyterian <laughs> that believed God made her sick to get glory out of it. She didn't know come here from Sikkim about the Word of God. Many of you don't know come here from Sikkim either. In Texas, that's the way we say Sikkim is like you say Sikkim to a dog. That's go away, go get them. Come here is the opposite. And so if you don't know come here from Sikkim, you don't know very much, amen. <laughs> So anyway, this woman, just 45 minutes before, had been basically ignorant of these things. I taught her the word, and she prayed a great prayer for a person that had been a Presbyterian 45 minutes before. And she, this is nearly word for word what she said. She says, Father, I thank you that by your stripes I was healed. If I was healed, I am healed. It is your will to heal me. I claim my healing in Jesus' name. By your stripes I was healed. And when she got through, I said, so, do you still have the burning? And she says, yes. And I said, do you know why? And she said, no. And I said, that's not a good prayer. <laughs> Most of you are thinking, well, that's a great prayer. Those are all nice things to say, but it's not doing what Jesus told us to do. He told you to speak to the problem. She spoke to God and said wonderful things about Jesus and about it being His will. And those are good things to say. And by saying those things, she may have had faith come to her ears because faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word. So it may have built her up and helped her some. But it didn't do.